What's up, everybody? It's Rocky and Ross from the Driver Era, and you're watching Spindle. I think I'm a pretty good one's Pharrell. Yeah, we like Pharrell. Pharrell's pretty dope. I think he's like a producer and, mm -hmm. and songwriter. All around he's consistent. He's consistent. Yeah. Uh, I like, uh, I kind of like talking, like doing someone that like is no longer living. Yeah, me too. Uh, Prince, bro. Prince would be sick. Uh, I'd love to work with Prince. I think it'd be sick to do a, you know, a Beatle. Jo oh yeah, John Lennon, yeah. like, yeah, yeah, yeah. why not? I mean, you could even go Paul McCartney. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Saw him at uh, in Vancouver oh, recently. that's right. That's pretty crazy. He was playing the stadium in Vancouver, and me and my dad were on a whim, uh, like uh, walking around the stadium. Yeah, and just bummed some tickets off somebody. It was crazy. That's pretty sick. It's a good show, bro. He yeah. rocks. He's like dude, seventy something, dude. And he played for like three hours. I don't know how him or the Stones are alive. By their, by what, just what the they stones. like put in their body. Oh my gosh. <laughs> just like, anyway. Kind of just like new beginnings, fresh starts. Uh, we have, we've been doing music now for about 10 years. Um, and we had been touring in a band called R5 for a long time. And it was great, it was really good. But um, there came a time when we needed to start, start over again. I guess. Yeah. And that was the Driver era. That freaking Continuum album by John Mayer is just so damn good, bro. That's good. It's such a good record. Every, from top to bottom. Every song on that record is amazing. <laughs> the Killer's Greatest Hits. <laughs> yeah. Or what do they call it? Direct Hit? Direct something? Hits. Yeah. That's pretty good. Yeah, no, that one's super good. I can, do, I can get down with the Killers. Oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, they got some good ones. Yeah. If you could, like, what about one song, though? What's the one song? That you never get tired of. Dude. Is that possible? Low by the driver era. Oh, what's up? I think one word, and, and I'm sure a lot of musicians like to describe their music this way, but I, I genuinely do think that the album is eclectic. I think it comes, there's all sorts of different inspirations and genres and, um, styles all mashed up into one body of work. Um, I think it's... Uh, <laughs> that's hard. I mean, it's hard to like not say things and, and, and have it not sound like, like, like almost like a forest or like, I guess you could say cocky. Yeah. But like, I <laughs> mean, it, it feels kind of progressive it. to some extent. Um, Definitely. Uh, you say diverse. Eclectic. Yeah, so, um, strange, maybe, at times. Yeah, for sure. Which is good. You want, you want a little bit an of album to have a little bit of that, I would say. Uh, I think it's, I, I think it's surprisingly, like, emotional at times. Yeah. Like, someone was just telling us today, they were like, your, your music seems to be, like, coming from an open place. And that was kind of cool to hear, because we do try to, like, we try to be honest with our expression. Yeah. Um, Entertaining. Yeah, there you go. That's five. Like, nice. I like it. Entertained by it. I like it. Honestly, there's this movie called Jumper. I think it's got Anakin Skywalker in it. <laughs> it's pretty um, hype. I think his, his real name's like Hayden Christensen or something like that. Um, but he can like jump locations. Like, he just That's imagines sick, yeah. himself there and then. He, chill, he like, it's basically a teleporter. And he like robs banks and stuff. I honestly would be super down with that because I, I end up spending a lot of time on planes. And that would just be convenient. Yeah, that or, you know, your typical like flying or, or mm -hmm. something where you could just, if you could fly. We once saw this band OAR <laughs> at Red Rocks. Uh, I remember like leaving that leaving Red Rocks and be like, all right, that, that sounds kind of fun. Like that could be something I could do. Uh, there's also times when we were really, really young where we just like, we had like instruments in our basement and we'd like <laughs> attempt to play music and we'd sell tickets to our aunts and uncles. But like actual like 
oh, there's something there, like kind of maybe a love for music was OAR at Red Rocks. It sounds, it, it probably does sound pretty cliche, but I think the one thing I don't want to live without is like music. Yeah. It's like either like a piano or a guitar <laughs> in close proximity of wherever I'm living. Uh, I was gonna say my hard drive because, but I just backed that up, so we might be in the clear, but at one point, we had like 10, maybe 10 or 15 new like random song ideas that we'd started, but they weren't backed up. But I just got that taken care of. Our dad's always given us flack for that too. Oh, yeah, he's, he's like, like, you need a backup for the backup. Yeah. Dude. I think the best moments in, in songwriting is when you discover the magic. When it's like, when it, like the song's inception and you're just like, yeah. And you find something, some like note combination or like some sort of line that just really hits home. That moment and that, it just like feels so good. And like, I want to say like maybe the next day after, like maybe oh, when you realize it's actually yeah, good. maybe you had a bunch <laughs> of ideas. Maybe you're in the studio for like a couple hours, and maybe we put down some ideas enough to where you can kind of click play on like a verse chorus. And the next day, you kind of like, maybe you kind of know how it goes, but it just like isn't, not, you're like purposefully kind of not thinking about it. And then you go like click play and you're like, oh, I like this. I love that moment. Mm -hmm. uh, and then the worst part about songwriting is when you have a hard drive full of songs that you're super fond of that are unfinished. Yeah. And it's, and it's like constantly pecking at your brain. Finish me. <laughs> yeah and and you like you it's not that you don't like the songs like you love the songs yeah. it's just that the process of completion is hard yeah especially when you're perfectionist like we are you know maybe like if the day's been a little crazy or like you know you like whatever your mind you've been thinking about stuff maybe just attempt to kind of like just like bring it in kind of be like there in that city or wherever you are there might be a little bit of that before the show. Other than that, like, have fun. You like the ritual. <laughs> yeah, I think you gotta wake up to some like fresh coffee. Yeah. I love me some coffee in the morning. Yeah. Maybe um, some studio time. Yeah. Start, you, a, a perfect day has productivity in it. Mm -hmm. Um. And like maybe you like you write like just, just an awesome song that feels really good. Healthy lunch. Yeah. Maybe like some sports in the afternoon. Yeah. Some hockey time. Some family time. See some friends. I don't know, man. I've been thinking about this girl. I really just want to cuddle, bro. <laughs> Yo, that's what I was gonna say. Like, damn. The thing you said, you kind of do that exact day. Maybe towards the end of the night, you have like a little like hang out with that girl. Yeah. And then you like hit the studio for like a couple more hours. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Just yeah. real quick before you go to sleep. <laughs> now the